You might think that learning music theory will force you to think inside of the box, but the ironic thing is that people who know the least theory often tend to compose inside of the smallest boxes. For proof, look no further than how musicians use minor chords. The next time you're at an open mic night with people strumming guitars and singing original music, see how many chords you can spot that aren't minor six chords. If an untrained ear is looking for chords that sound good together, it will hear the minor six chord first and think, oh, that sounds good, use that one. As I mentioned in the last video in this series, there's nothing wrong with common chord progressions. Using a limited vocabulary of chords doesn't mean you're a bad songwriter, and using a lot of chords doesn't mean you're a good one. But what if you're a stubborn contrarian like me and you don't like being stuck in a box? The very first step to get out would be to use chords other than one, four, five, and the minor six. After all, you can't think outside of the box if you don't know that you're in a box. If you really want to expand your harmonic vocabulary beyond the four most common chords, the first place to start would be the two chord. Now, a one chord, a four chord, a five, or a six, you can really throw anywhere in a chord progression and they sound mostly okay, but two requires a bit more careful planning. Two as a predominant chord. If you've been watching this series so far, you know that the five chord really wants to resolve to the one chord. One could also be referred to as the tonic chord and five as the dominant chord because those are the names of the scale degrees they get their roots from. Five is obviously five notes up the scale from one, but what happens if you go five notes up the scale from five? There is no such thing as a Roman numeral nine chord because things repeat after seven. So a fifth up from the five chord would actually be the minor two chord. Realize that when we're talking about chord progressions, a fifth up and a fourth down is essentially the same thing. So if you go down a fourth from the five chord, you still land on the two chord. Whether we are consciously aware of it or not, our ears pick up on patterns in music. And this pattern of the root moving in fifths is part of the reason why 251 sounds so dang good to us. Another reason this works is because of the voice leading, where the individual notes of the chord are not having to all jump around to get to the next chord. If 5-1 were a punctuation mark, it would be a musical period. 2-5-1 would be like writing the sentence, I'm about to write a period, and then writing a period. Note to self, think of a better metaphor later. What happens if you take this pattern of fifths one step further? Five notes up the scale from two would be the six chord. And six, two, five, one happens to be an extremely common chord progression in both classical music and pop. This is sometimes referred to as the circle progression because the roots are traveling through the circle of fifths. Weezer's Island in the Sun uses these chords, just played with a much cooler rhythm than this. Two as a moody four. Take a look at the individual notes of a two chord, and you'll notice that it shares two out of the three notes in common with the four chord. For this reason, you can often put two in place of a four chord for a bit more color. Two can also easily move to a four chord for the same voice leading purposes I discussed earlier. One famous example of a two preceding a four chord would be the one, five, two, four progression, which is used in Cher's Believe and The Cure's Just Like Heaven. Let's listen. Two as a minor seventh chord. We build most chords by stacking thirds. If you follow the major scale and add another third on top of a two chord, it harmonizes as a minor seventh chord. Let's spell that out in the key of C major. We have the notes D, F, A, and C. C, that's the tonic, we know them. The fact that the two minor seven chord has a tonic in it makes it extremely accessible. Take any chord progression that has a two in it, stick a minor seventh on top, and it will usually make everything sound a bit smoother. In the first lesson of this series, I talked about how a four one progression is known as a plagal cadence. Because two minor seven contains all of the notes of a four chord, let's use it in place of a plagal cadence to let our audience know we're a cool person with a lot of friends. I recently performed Pink Floyd's album Dark Side of the Moon in concert, and that whole album is full of songs that just repeatedly go back and forth from minor two to five, minor two to five, never even resolving to one. Although I guess you could make the argument that if a song never goes to one, then it's actually not in a major key at all, but in the Dorian mode. But I've used enough fancy words already, so let's just forget I said that. Oftentimes when you're analyzing chords, there are multiple systems you can use to arrive at understanding and using them. So is it one minor seven to major four, or is it two minor seven to major five? Who cares, man? Just listen to how it sounds. 
I'm going to go out on a limb and say that the next part of this video is the only part that matters. With music theory, who cares if you can understand something conceptually if you can't also hear it and identify that concept in action? I'm going to play a series of chord progressions which all contain a two chord somewhere. See if you can identify where the two chords are. Some of them will be two minor seven, but don't worry if you can't differentiate between a regular minor chord and a minor seventh just yet. Good luck. Progression one in the key of C. The chords were one, five, two, four, or C, G, D minor, F. Progression two in the key of A. chords were 6, 2, 5, 1, or F sharp minor, B minor, E, A. Progression 3 in the key of E. chords were 2 minor 7, 5, 2 minor 7, 5, or F sharp minor 7, B, F sharp minor 7, B. Progression 4 in the key of E flat.
chords were one, two minor seven, five, one, or E flat, F minor seven, B flat, E flat. Progression five in A flat. The chords were 1, 5, 2 minor 7, 1, or A flat, E flat, B flat minor 7, A flat. Quick tip, learn a few common chord progressions in every single key. This starts out fairly difficult, but only gets easier and easier the more keys you do. After all, if you learn 2, 5, 1 in every key, learning 1, 5, 2, 4 in every key won't require an entirely new set of skills, because a lot of these chords will already be in your musical vocabulary. If you do this enough, one day you'll hear a song and think, oh, I know that chord progression because I've played it before. Tell me what key it's in and I'm good to go. Heck, let's play it in any key. I have transcended beyond the realm of ordinary musical thought. Tremble before me, lesser musicians. Music is a game which I have won. Oh, I, uh, I blacked out there for a second. Uh, uh, anyway, to help you out with this, I've collected 50 of the most useful chord progressions along with the transposition guide and links to songs that use these chords. In this collection, you'll find such classics as the Japanese pop progression and the Mario cadence. To download this PDF, simply join my marketing funnel. Hey, you're not supposed to see that. I mean, simply join my free newsletter and I'll send you a download link, along with more free resources like this every month or so. You can find the sign up link in the comments in the video description. Well, I hope today's video has just barely begun to help you think outside of the normal harmonic box. But what if it turns out that that box is in another box that's in another box? What if all the way out, it's just boxes? Just boxes in boxes? In boxes in boxes in boxes? In boxes.